Alright, welcome back. So these last couple days I've been flying the Karakal trainer and so far I didn't encounter any problems with the ship. It is a very robust and very solid ship for its rank and of course it does get the job done. Now for the fit I am still using the rapid missiles Mark V. I did try to use the long range missiles but they didn't quite work well as the rapid missiles. The classic missiles do have long range and they do have longer rate of fire but uh, these missiles besides having short range they also have more powerful dps and overall more powerful damage and using the classic missiles definitely didn't work quite well for this ship now it might be that this ship is just excellent with the rapid missiles but i'll definitely try the normal missiles once again when I have the expert skills leveled up. Now speaking of skills, uh, currently I am skilling the expert missile skills and of course the advanced missile skills. That will give me a further boost for the ship and of course for the damage of its missiles. And besides those, the electronic warfare skills are also skills that I'm currently increasing since I do want long range on my webifers and of course I am working to get a warp disruptor since I do need a warp disruptor to pretty much do PvP. And of course the maintenance skills are also in the plans and I do I think I also have decent decent maintenance skills because this ship does heal very quickly. And I didn't give this ship couple rigs, mostly rigs for the for the shield. I think I increased my shield capacity and shield booster rate uh, since I did need those a lot especially while doing these advanced missions now speaking of the advanced missions I was doing most of these that you can find even the tier 6 and tier 7 although the tier 6 and tier 7 advanced missions are kind of rare I really get them on a rare occasion and here I think I did include uh, 1 tier 5 and 1 tier 6 for the Amar and of course 1 tier 5 and 1 tier 6 for Calberry since I didn't find any tier 7 and I was I was very persistent in actually finding a tier 7 mission but I am not getting those that often I usually get one or two per day and that usually that's usually in the morning well uh, that omen is definitely going down and there we go he is he's soon going to go now this ship is like I said, very effective at medium distances and for the ship you will have to have a decent tank or a decent shield booster and of course decent speed for these missions and I think if I had a ballistic control I, was, uh, I would be able to increase my range to 25 kilometers I definitely have to try a ballistic control with this ship now of course I'll have to sacrifice a shield booster but I think it will be worth it since the since the ballistic control will increase my range and it will increase my DPS and the rate of fire which is something that I currently need to clear these missions fast and since I'll be orbiting them at 25 kilometers I think I would be safe from enemy fire but of course I'll have to test that out and I will do it in one of the later videos now now I do uh, prepare myself for PvP Hopefully there's going to be a fleet soon, so that I can join and pretty much see what we catch. And for that I do need a Warp Disruptor and I do need my Talvar. Now speaking of speaking of the Talvar, I did buy the classic Talvar, pretty much my iconic ship since I was doing a lot of PvP in that ship in the previous battles and that ship was excellent in the first two battles and I absolutely love that ship. So you can expect PvP videos real soon and of course I am also working my way up to my first faction ship and of course my first faction ship is going to be the prototypes which we are going to get in these couple days and I can't wait to get those two since those two ships are also kind of iconic for me since I was also flying them a lot and especially the especially the battlecruiser the battlecruiser was excellent for everything and I am, I'm very curious to see how that ship will perform now when I, when I get that ship. 
in the in the next 15 days since I think that's a login reward for the 30th day after the release so a month after the release so it will be interesting to see how that ship will perform now as for the destroyer prototype we are going to get that prototype tomorrow and you can definitely expect me playing those ships in the next videos just to see and to compare their performances now and in the last beta since in the last beta those ships had insane DPS and overall those ships were the most powerful ships in the game and thankfully they were balanced and it will be interesting to see how those ships will perform now in the full, in the full release of the game I'm very curious to see how they will perform and also a advice uh, if you get those ships since they are a they are a login reward a, a one time thing in maybe one or two years from now those ships might be actually very rare and very expensive so my advice would be to keep those ships don't risk losing them or if you if you use them make sure that you use them at pretty much missions or pve that you uh, that you're pretty familiar with because those ships might be actually very expensive in one or two years from this point and I'm definitely going to keep those ships safe of course I'll be also flying them but I will not be risking those ships in PvP or in any unfamiliar uh, situation so I'll keep those ships safe and we'll see how much will be how much worth will they be in at least one or two years from now since I think those ships are going to be very expensive since they are a one-time thing and they are actually a collectionable item so it will be interesting to see how those ships will uh, how those ships will be priced in one or two years after the game's release well uh, I definitely have to replace my light drone for the ship since the light, the light drones aren't that bad but it's only one and the dps output on one drone is like i think it's 20 dps i i think it's 20 dps on the light drone that i currently have and i do need to get myself a medium drone or a couple of the medium drones since they are really good and i did look at the market and i didn't like the pricing of them since i think they're or they're still overpriced and I'm not going to waste 10 million ISK on a Infiltrator Mark V medium drone, so I'm going to either make one myself or I am going to pretty much try to find a medium drone if they if they are a loot that you can that you can get from from these rats. Now I have to say uh, having low thermal resistances when you're doing the Amar missions isn't a isn't a good idea. My ship currently has only 20% thermal resistance, pretty much a big hole. So that means these lasers that they are using are actually melting my shields very quickly. But of course, despite that, I didn't warp out since I was quite confident that I can withstand their fire, and I was I was correct. It was around, well, I, they left me at around 10% shield, but I did survive and I managed to kill all of them. So, when you're doing these Amar missions, make sure that you have decent thermal resistances, because you will, you're going to need those against these lasers. And so far, uh, this ship is doing a good job despite its, uh, despite its thermal hole, but in the future, when I get a uh, classic Caracal or, of course, if I use my Talar for these missions, I'm going to make sure to have a invulnerability field because uh, I think I think a invulnerability field is actually a uh, necessary thing to have in these missions, especially if you're aiming to have a decent tank. Now, I'll be showing you a couple fittings that I do uh, have in mind for the vast majority of ships that is pretty much universal for, for most ships in PvE and of course for anomalies and of course missions since I think having a universal fit for most ships is going to uh, make everyone's life in the game easier because uh, this is going to be important uh, later on now these first two missions were Amar missions and now I did jump on Caldari missions have to say I'd rather fight Caldari ships than Amar ships, mostly because of that 
thermal hole. Now, the current missiles that they are firing at me is doing kinetic and explosive damage. Mostly explosive because, after all, it is a missile. And I do have 50% or 60% explosive resistance, so that's pretty high up. And they aren't hitting me as hard as the Amar ships because they are not uh, using thermal damage as their primary source of damage. But in the end, uh, it could, however, be that they're also using uh, the all wide spectrum of the damage types. Because I do know that my missiles here are doing all damage types pretty much and and who knows, maybe they're also uh, doing all kinds of damage. But I have to say uh, I didn't have to rip I didn't have to boost my shield that much that much often as when I was fighting the Amar ships, since the Amar ships definitely were breaking out my shield a lot faster than these Calder ships. But well uh, that's pretty much, I guess, normal because anyway, my resistances are aren't that good, and of course, I'll be working on improving my resistances on this ship and of course on the next ship, since I still do need uh, a separate ship for PVE, and I need a separate ship for uh, PVP, since having a ship for both is also convenient, and uh, when I do anomalies in null sec or low sec. I am mostly doing those with a PvP ship because I, I am pretty much equipped in case someone jumps in and starts stealing my loot or if someone jumps in and starts to shoot me, which did happen a lot uh, during these couple days. And so far I have defended myself successfully against all attackers. And I did also have a couple funny situations where people who jump in realized that uh, it's me and well like I said before if you if you encounter if you see me in the game or in the local feel free to say hi I am definitely going to uh, answer back that's not a big problem and I did make a couple couple good allies that way so far in the game and that was kind of and that was very interesting and that was that did kind of surprise me okay well that this uh, this ship is slowly not going to this sh these ships that you can see here the destroyers and frigates are all carrying webifers and disruptors and you have to be very careful on those since sometimes when you warp in in this in these missions sometimes you warp into a structure or you warp into a asteroid and the ship sometimes can get stuck in those and that's not a pleasant experience, especially uh, it happened to me while I was doing a tier 7 anomaly and that didn't end up almost, that almost didn't end up well because um, because I was cornered by at least three battlecruisers and I was in my character trainer. Thankfully I did manage to kill all of them before they killed my shield since if they did somehow manage to penetrate my shield then I would be in big trouble since this is a cavalry ship and cavalry ships don't have impressive armors and don't have impressive structures. However, they have impressive shields, which is a trait for cavalry ships since they rely mostly on their shields. Now, I was also thinking about uh, what my uh, what my next faction ships are going to be, pretty much the faction ships that I'm going to buy or produce myself and I'm kind of torn between a Phantasm, a Gila or a Cinnabal. Those three ships are very very impressive and I don't know which one to make my primary since I do like the Angel ships, they are fantastic, I absolutely love the Macariel, that ship is absolutely insane. The DPS output on the Macariel is absolutely insane and the Cinnabel also has a very impressive DPS, but the Phantasm and the Gila are also decent ships and they're also unique, so I don't know which one to get, uh, although I know eventually I'll be getting all of them, if not most of them, and I'm also, I'm also having a look at the Ashimu, that ship is also impressive and it is one of the ships that kind of stuck with me from, uh, from my EVE Online experience years ago. Those four ships are pretty much ships that uh, I am aiming for or that I'll be aiming for in the 
very near future, and I don't know which one to get first, since those ships are going to be very expensive uh, once they start to be produced. And what happened to my skin on my ship? Why? Where is my skin? My skin disappeared. Oh well, I guess it's a bug. I did also, I did get the alien hunter sk uh, skin for this ship, and it looked very good. And I like the design of it, but for some reason, for some reason, it disappeared. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I guess, I guess the ship doesn't like me, so the ship decided no skin for you. Oh well, jokes aside, jokes aside, uh, I'm looking, I, I will be looking forward to uh, get one of these faction ships since they are impressive, and I think, in any case, the Cinnabal is going to be my first faction ship that I'll be going for. Now, of course, I, I'll be also uh, buying the faction frigates since I also need those for PvP and for other uh, for other stuff. It's interesting that I don't fly the faction cruisers and the stores in PvP. I mostly fly the faction frigates in PvP because they're overall impressive and they're hard to catch. Now, as for the Cinnabal, I'll be mostly using that ship for missions and anomalies because that ship is perfect for that and is overall impressive. Now, I know that you can make that ship be very impressive for PvP, but I don't, I don't like to, I don't like to fly these bigger ships in PvP, especially solo, since they are slower compared to the frigates and destroyers. And in case I stumble upon uh, the wrong enemy, then they can catch me and they can call the fleet on me and. That way, in that way, in that case, I risk of losing a very expensive ship. Well, if I fly a frigate, which is very agile and very quick, I can avoid those nasty situations. So flying, flying a faction frigate in PvP is the way to go for me. And of course, destroyers, in, in some cases destroyers, if it is a fast destroyer like the Talvar, then I guess I can also use a destroyer. But frigates and faction frigates are the best for that, especially the faction frigates. They are very powerful and they are very good. And I'll be working my way to get a couple of these, of course, since I uh, I do need those after all. And I'll be working really hard to get those ships, since I am currently making around 10 to 15 million isk per day. So I think that's uh, that's I think enough. And. I mostly spend that isk on current uh, on items pretty much since I do need rigs. I do need backup ships and I do need uh, more modules for my PvE ships to pretty much make them more efficient. So most of the isk that I get during the day I pretty much spend and then I have to uh, pretty much farm again. But I am getting to the point where I don't have to upgrade my ships that often since I do have the vast I do have uh, most things that I need and that means I'll be saving a lot for the for the future ships that I did have and that I did plan to get well these missions are appearing to be easy they're actually more fun than uh, the, than the MR missions mostly because the ships that I'm fighting are kind of easier to fight and overall they do drop very very useful items for me that I plan to actually sell. Now, I do have around, I think, 4.5 million uh, ISK value in my cargo hold here. And in theory, I can make those 4.5 million into 45 million if I sell them on the right price, on the, uh, on the right price in the right time. And I'll be trying to actually do that, since I was doing the same thing in the last beta. Pretty much I did sell, and I did, I did manage to uh, sell items that are valued around, let's say, you know, from 20 to 30 million for around maybe 100 million and 300 million. So I did make big profit in the last beta that way, because I was quite, I was quite tactical in uh, in selling those items and I think I'll be doing the same thing now since after all I need disk and I am upgrading my ships pretty much selling old and unused modules and items for the new uh, items that are more powerful and that I actually do need and that way uh, I have to say I have to say that was quite effective 
and I might also try to see uh, if you can make a sustained income of ISK uh, with doing PvP and for that I'll be needing a, a very decent ship which I'll be which I'll be getting very soon. Well, the last Caracal is slowly going down and I have to say these missions were indeed very fun and very enjoyable and if you're looking for Mark V equipment then you should do uh, the tier 5 advanced missions since they do give those and they also give decent ISK. Well, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.